Hey everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Injustice 2 Character Talks, and today's episode is going to be all about Poison Ivy. So, Poison Ivy first initially appeared in Batman 181 in June 1966. She originally did not have an origin in the 60s, so she was basically just a temptress. Poison Ivy is a villain. Her real name is Pamela Lillian Isley. She is a criminal eco-terrorist. The city that she lives in is Gotham City. She has green eyes, her hair is chestnut colored. Her special powers and abilities include her altered body chemistry, which enables her to secrete a venomous variety of oral toxins to which she alone is immune. She carries with her a plethora of pernicious plants that germinate from fast growing seed pumpkins. Seed pumpkins. Um, so, a little bit about Poison Ivy. Botanist Pamela Isley was a shrinking violet when she went to work for famed scientist and supervillain in the making, Dr. Jason Woodrow. The future pharaonic man experimented on her hoping to create a human plant hybrid like himself. Would you would succeed in all too well creating a lavishingly but deadly poison ivy? Where Ivory was gamely unremarkable, Ivy was gorgeous and unforgettable. Her porcelain skin soon took on a green pigmentation as poor of her replaced her human blood. So poison ivy is very dangerous. Um Ivy even exuded Man maddening pheromones and natural toxins. She was poison ivy in more than name. Ironically, the sun loving ivy found herself drawn to gloomy Gotham City where she sought the seeds of a criminal career to fund her true cause as a green gorilla championing the world's diminishing fauna. She discovered a worthy foe in Batman who has resisted Ivy's fragment charm charms while uprooting her terrorist schemes. Ivy's victim, consumed by carnivorous plants, triggered the creation of the plant monster monster known as Harvest. Poison Ivy loves the color of money, especially because robbery and extortion helped to fund her exotic environmental causes. So that is from my encyclopedia. We are going to go to Wikipedia. So I can tell you about a couple of her origins, like her new 52 origin, and stuff. So, she is commonly known as an adversary of the superhero Batman, and she was created by Robert Canagher and Shadow Morrow. So, she is one of Batman's most enduring enemies and belongs to the collective of adversaries that make up Batman's gallery of rogues. So, she is depicted as one of the world's most notorious eco terrorists. Her real name is Pamela Lillian Isley, a botanist in Gotham City. She is obsessed with plants, ecological extinction, and environmentalism. She uses a toxin from her plants and mind controlling pheromones for her criminal activities, which are usually aimed at protect protecting endangered species in the natural environment. Um, Harley Quinn is often her recurring partner in crime, and she has been in the roman the romantic interest of Bruce Wayne's, of Batman's, and the comic book storylines. In her earliest appearances, she wore a green one-piece outfit covered with plant leaves, also which also formed her bracelets, necklace, and head wreath. The character's look has evolved over the years, and she's typically depicted with long, flowing hair, plant vines extending over her neck, and wings, and a green one-piece outfit adorned with leaves. And she was portrayed by Uma Thurman in Batman and Robin. Now, this is an unpopular opinion, but I love that movie because of the fact that Poison Ivy's in it. So. She was voiced by Dan Diane Pershing in the Batman the Animated Series um, by Piero Coppola on 
the Batman is more teenage version and a completely revamped incarnation has been voiced by Tessia Valenza for the Batman Arkham video game franchise and for Injustice 2. She is voiced by Ricky Lindholm in the Bat Lego Batman movie. Her notable notable aliases have been Pamela William Isley and Paula Irving. She has been affiliated with the teams Birds of Prey and Justice Game and Justice League Secret Society of Supervillains. She worked for Star Labs once. Um she was in the Suicide Squad at one point. And when she was in Birds of Prey, she was recruited specifically by Black Canary. Her abilities include trained botanist, expert in toxicology, and genetic secretion of floral toxins and mind controlling pheromones, immunity to toxins and pathogens, and she can manipulate plants through life through force called the green. So, moving on. Her origin story was later retconned for her because she did not have one in the 1960s as I mentioned. The character was partly inspired by the short story Rappuccini's Daughter written by Nathaniel Hawthorne about a maiden who tends to a garden of poisonous plants. She becomes resistant to the poisons but in the process she herself becomes poisonous to others. This character is typically depicted with long flowing hair, plant of light extending on her neck and limb, Limbs in a green one piece suit adorned with leaves. During the pre crisis, Dr. Lillian Rose, PhD, a promising botanist from Seattle, is persuaded by Mark Legrande into assisting him with the theft of an Egyptian artifact containing ancient herbs. Fearing she would implicate him in the theft, he attempts to poison her with herbs which are deadly and untraceable. She survives this murder attempt and discovers she has acquired an immunity to all the natural toxins and diseases. Her origins were revised in Secret Origins number 36, 1988, written by Neil Gaiman. Gaiman, however you say that. Her real name is Dr. Pamela William Isley, PhD, a botanist in Gotham City. She grows up wealthy with emotionally distant parents and later studies advanced botanical biochemistry at a university of Alec Holland under Dr. Jason Woodrow. And I just went over that origin. She was seduced by him and injected with poisons and toxins of an experiment which caused her transformation. She dies twice as a result of these poisonings which drive her insane. Later he flees from the authorities leaving Isley in the hospital for six months. And enraged, she suffers from violent mood swings, being sweet one moment, evil the next. <laughs> when her boyfriend has a car accident, after mysteriously suffering from a massive fungal overdose, she drops out of school and leaves Seattle, eventually settling in Gotham City. She begins her criminal career by threatening to release her suffocating spores into the air unless. The city meets her demands, Batman, who appears in Gotham that very same year, messes up her scheme and she is incarcerated in Arkham Island. From this point on, she has a kind of obsession with him, he being the only person she couldn't control. Over the years, she develops, develops plant-like superpowers, the most noticeable being a lethal toxin in her lips. So, for those of you that don't know this, she can kill you with a kiss, literally. It happened in Batman the animated series in one episode. In subsequent issues, she states that she only started a life of crime to obtain sufficient funds to find a location to be alone with her plants, and undisturbed by humanity. A few years go by and she attempts to leave Gotham forever, escaping Arkham to settle on a desert island in the Caribbean. 
she transformed as a barren wasteland into a second Eden. So like a garden. And for the first time in her life, she is happy. But the soon fire bomb tells her when an American owned corporation tests their weapon systems out on what they think is an abandoned island, she returns to Gotham with a vengeance, punishing those responsible. After she is willingly apprehended by Batman, she resolves that she can never leave Gotham, at least not until the, the world is safe for plants. From then on, she dedicates herself to the impossible mission of purifying Gotham. At one point, Batman travels to Seattle to ascertain information on her life before she became Poison Ivy, and he states that both of Pamela's parents are dead. When and why they died has been left undetermined. While she was in Arkham, she received a message through flowers that someone is to help her escape. That night, two women, Holly and Eva, successfully break Ivy out of Arkham and bring her back to the employer. She is less than happy to discover that it is the Flamonic Man, formerly known as the Doctor, that injected her with the poisons. Jason Woodrill. The only portion he knew that is human that remains in is his head, while the rest of his body is plant based. After striking a deal with Woodrow in the underground tunnels of Gotham, Ivy receives a trunk full of money in return for samples of her DNA. Woodrow intends to combine their DNA to create a child. So he wanted to make a child with Ivy's DNA. All while flooding the streets of Gotham with high powered marijuana. The purpose of this is to create a world economy around hemp and to save have their offspring control of Batman intervenes and is overcome by Woodrow's henchwoman Holly and Eva. He eventually turns on Flonic Man and lets Batman go to fight the intoxicated maniac and then he decapitates the Flonic Man and Ivy escapes with her mummy. Now she is known to demonstrate positive and maternal traits. Um, she once took in a bunch of children. Sixteen children who went orphaned during the quake in Gotham City. Um, she holds dominion over Robinson Park and turns it into a tropical paradise. Um, that's where the children um, are living with her. And she sympathizes with them because she had a traumatic childhood herself. Um, so she cares for them like sons and like daughters. So I'm not going to go into this part with um, Chloe Face, so I'm going to move on. New 52 origin. Here it is. Okay, so Ivy's New 52 origin. She is recruited, recruited into the covert ops group known as the Birds of Prey. Though she is specifically handpicked by the team's leader, Black Canary. The other members protest her inclusion, citing her violent past and connections to various murders. These suspicions are proven correct with when Ivy poisons the team and forces them to attack corrupt companies she wants to destroy until Katana apparently kills her. She survives her injuries and returns to Gotham, breaking out Clayface, Basil, Carlo in order to man manipulate him into becoming her husband. Batman intervenes to help her and in his location she attacked with Penguin's properties. She ends up captured by Penguin's men and buried alive by them, but survives long enough to be rescued by his right hand Man Emperor and Penguin, who has taken his boss business businesses after the Joker's return, and proposes an alliance with her. However, Carlo, who Batman had set free from Ivy's control, tracks down and attacks Poison Ivy. So.
these origins and this new DC Universe were presented in a special issue of Detective Comics during the Villains Month event in September 2013. So moving on, here's her new 52 origin. Pamela Isley was born with a skin condition that prevented her from leaving her home, and the garden was the place where she spent most of her limited time outside. Her father constantly beat her mother until he finally killed her. So her father killed her mother because he was abusive. And he buried her in the garden. While Pamela was in college, she sold pheromone pills to other students to study its effects until she was caught by the police. And she used the powerful version of the pills to mind control the beans so she could have them drop have them drop the charges and to let her graduate from college with honors. While she visited her father in prison, she kissed him with the poison that was secreted from her lips that killed him. And later on went on to land an internship in Wayne Enterprises in biochemistry where she developed pharmaceutical and cosmetic applications and was fired after proposing, proposing Booth Wayne to develop chemicals that could brainwash people by triggering social or behavioral responses from them. As she was escorted out by security, she accidentally spilled the chemicals she was working with on herself, giving her powers to control plant life and immunity to all poisons and viruses. Okay. So we're not gonna go too much into the cycle of life and death, but in January two thousand six a DC Comics um six issue mini series was debuted as Ivy's first ongoing series. She joins the prestigious Planet Sciences Department of Gotham Botanical Gardens and she successfully creates two children who are plant human hybrids like herself that um, Ivy names Rose and Halo and she ends up having to protect them when they try to go out in the real world real world. Um, and so on. Swamp Thing appears in the very last issue to help. And Poison Ivy has a friends with benefits relationship going on with Harley Quinn and on ongoing comic issue. She will occasionally drop by, sleep with Harley, help her out of a jam, or otherwise assist her and her friends. So, since Harley broke into Arkham one time to rescue her from being mind controlled and forced to create a weaponized hallucination, she has found out that she truly loves the clown girl with a relationship though her relationship is not monogamous. This was confirmed by Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor because they are the current writers for Harley Quinn and they confirmed that um, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn are both uh, bisexual. So, relationships and teams include Poison Ivy joins Two-Faces Gang for a short period of time during Batman Dark Victory, where she murders crime boss Lucia VD on Two-Faces orders. And she is notice notably the only member of the gang to be upset by Two-Faces casual murder of fellow gang member Solomon Grundy, who is a plant-based entity. This gang broke up after Two-Faces' apparent death at the hand of the Joker. Poison Ivy is a member of the original Injustice gang in the world, which fights the Justice League on several occasions. She's been a part of the secret society of supervillains, um, and later joins Alexander Luther Jr. the incarnation of the society. She is coerced into being a member of the Suicide Squad. During this, she uses the ability she has to enslave Count Virgo. And her best friend is Joker's girlfriend, Harley Quinn. Unlike most villain teams, their partnership seems to be based on genuine friendship. And Ivy sincerely, Ivy sincerely wants to save Harley from her abusive relationship with the Joker. Accordingly, Poison Ivy despises him. And the two exchange vicious banter at every opportunity. In the final storyline of the Gotham City Sirens, she 
suggests that Ivy may be in love with her, which is an accusation that stuns her. The following issue has poisoned Ivy acknowledged that she may indeed love Harley, but it is never confirmed if she is romantically interested in her or, she, or if she just merely loves Harley like a sister. Um, in June 2015, Poison Ivy was revealed to be by sexual by Harley Quinn series writers Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor, stating that they are in a non-monogamous relationship that is romantic. So, the partnership between Harley and Ivy has also at times included Catwoman, such as episodes and issues of the Gotham Girls webtoon and comic book series. In the mainstream universe, the three formed the Gotham City Sirens. Aside from Har having Harley as her ally, Ivy usually works alone. With or without Harley, she is adept at committing crimes and is one of Batman's most lethal enemies. Thanks to her combination of her intelligence, beauty, and power, we're going to fair months. So. Here's more detail on her abilities. Let me go over quick. So, the dangerous experiments that transform Pamela into poison ivy plus a deliberate overdose of plant and animal based toxins into her bloodstream that make her touch deadly, while also allowing her to boost her immunity to all poisons, viruses, bacteria, and fungi. This immunity also includes Joker, Venom. Some comics have even gone so far as to depict her as more plant than human breathing carbon dioxide and requiring sunlight to survive because she is a human plant it's basically all poison ivy is a human plant the character's body produces pheromones that make people susceptible to mind control around her although strong minded people like batman are usually usually the ones capable of resisting and she specializes in hybrids and can create the most potent floral toxins in Gotham City. Often which are secreted from her lips and administered in her preferred way a poisonous kiss. Usually after professing false love or affection to her victim, they come in a number of varieties from mind controlling drugs to instantly fatal toxins. She has the ability to encourage, encourage and direct the growth of plant life on a molecular molecular level. For example, on Arkham, she was able to manipulate and animate plants, using their roots to form supports for a tunnel. She and another inmate named Magpie were digging to escape and also spawning glowing fungi to entertain Magpie. Poison Ivy is identified by the Swamp Thing as a being with an elemental mystical component whom he calls the May Queen, and writers have not referred to her in this way in quite some time. She has shown an ability to use the green of force connected to plant life, which she's able to communicate over great distances, distances with this talent, as she manifests in evasive roses in Zatanna's dressing room to talk to the magician. The character carries a certain number of live vines coupled with her natural ability to move with plant life. They act as weaponry or defensive grabbing appendages. Their supply is heavily limited. So, in this, um, JLA created equal. Her in. Swamp Thing, however, will team up to mentally travel through the green to try and discover what exactly caused the event which wiped out almost every male on the planet, but the trip is too much for her and it shatters her mind. This is interesting. In Elseworld, when Batman and Demon and Tragedy, Ivy is characterized, characterized as an elfin elven healer in which she gives Bruce Wayne a cure for his night terrors only to be slaughtered by Etrigan the Demon. So Etrigan the Demon 
killed her in some storyline. Or she was an Elven healer. And in Flashpoint, which is an alternate timeline of the Flashpoint event, she's subsequently killed by Batman. She has appeared in The Batman. Batman Brave and the Bold, where she's voiced by Jennifer Hill. Jennifer Hale, excuse me. Um, Young Justice, where she's voiced by Alyssa Milano. Where she's a member of the Injustice League. She appears in the Super Best Friends Forever episode, Time Waits for No Girls. Poison Ivy is portrayed by as a member of the Legion of Doom Robot Chicken, DC Comics Special Chew, and Villain of the Paradise. In which she was voiced by Claire Grant. And she is now currently being portrayed in Gotham, um, formerly by Claire Foley as a younger Poison Ivy, and um, now by Maggie, Maggie Geha as an older Ivy Pepper and the future Poison Ivy in Gotham. And she has been in the Batman animated series voiced by Diane Pershing and, and in the new Batman Adventures. She appears in Static Shock, Gotham Girls Webtoon, and in the Justice League series episode of Better World. An alternate universe version of the character appears only once in a lobotomized form. Um, in the only Batman Arkham game that she does not appear in is Arkham City. She is hinted at, though, in Batman Arkham City, and she appears as a support card in the iOS version of Injustice Gods Among Us, depicted with her new 52 look, um, and she is a playable character in the multiplayer online battle arena game Infinite Crisis, voiced by Jessica Valenza. Also voiced by Tessia Valenza um, as a playable character in Injustice 2, reprising her role from the Arkham series. She's also more human-like in Batman Arkham Knight. She doesn't have um, the darker type green skin. It's just a light tint of the color. And her hair has been cut short and tied above her head. But she wears the same outfit, which is basically as a version of her um, crimson colored shirt that she wears. In the games. Um, let's see if there's anything else. I think that is it. So, this is interesting though, it's a miscellaneous um, story. Poison Ivy appears in The Flower Girl, a story in issue 16 of Batman Adventures Volume 2. In the story, she is dying from the effects of her own toxins and makes her way to Dr. Holland, who is practicing science in a remote rural cottage. She pleads with him to save her life, but he explains to her that there is nothing he can do. So, shortly after, she ends up dying. Moments later, after she collapses into a pile of dead plants, Another Pamela Isley, whose character design matches her appearance in Batman the Animated Series, appears. 
she states that the ivy who died is a vegetable creature that she had created as a distraction for Batman. That's interesting. Okay, so with that being said, there's nothing else to really talk about with Ivy. I mean, go over everything. So, um, basically her part in Injustice 2 is not a huge part. She's part of the society. So, um, she's on Grodd's team, basically. And that's she so she's not gonna have a really large part in Justice Two. I wish she did, but she's not. So this concludes episode three of Injustice Two character talks on Poison Ivy. And my next one is coming up soon, which I will go ahead and tell you. The next one is Deadshot. It may be a rather short episode depending on how much information I find out about him. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave a like and a comment, please let me know what you think of the series, and maybe which character you would like to see next, um, so thanks for watching, bye.